Hi and welcome to another story and today we have part one of Secrets by Jacqueline Wilson starting from the very beginning chapter one treasure this is the start of my whole new life I'm never going home I don't ever want to see mum again or Bethany or Kyle or grizzly little Gary and I especially don't ever 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 want to see Terry this notebook used to be the official Terry torture manual. I invented a brand new torture for him every day. It was a lot of fun, but then sneaky Bethany found the notebook under my pillow and showed it to him. He turned the pages very slowly, taking in all my carefully coloured diagrams of torture machines. I'd spent hours on the terrible tooth tweaker in the excruciating ear enlarger and the beastly big bum basher. Terry looked at them. He nodded. He drew in his breath. Then he ripped the pages out and tore them up into tiny pieces. It was obvious he wanted to tear me into tiny pieces too. Mum tried to turn it into a joke and pretended it was just my warped sense of humour. That kid of yours is warped all right, said Terry. He stood up and unblocked the heavy leather belt around his jeans. She needs teaching a lesson once and for all. Mum tried to laugh him out of it, acting like he was just kidding. She said he didn't really mean it. He was just trying to scare me. We were all scared. When he raised the belt, Mum yelled at me to run for it. I didn't run fast enough. He got me on the side of my head and broke my glasses and cut me all down my forehead. Mum cried. Bethany cried because it was all her fault. Kyle cried too, though he likes to make out he's so tough. Gary cried, but that's nothing new. I didn't cry. I stood there with, a, with blood trickling down into my eyes and I clenched my fists and stared straight at Terry. He looked a bit fuzzy without my specs, but he's got these really cold green eyes that you can't miss. I focused on them, staring him out. He was the one who broke first. He looked away, ducking his head like he was ashamed. He went straight out down the pub, even though Nan and Loretta and her little Brittany and Willie and Patsy were coming round for tea. It was all laid out on the living room table. Ham sandwiches and sausage rolls and leftover chocolate log and mince pies and fruit cake, though Kyle and I had nicked most of the icing. Bethany's off sweet stuff at the moment because she thinks she's fat. Well, she is. I annoy, her, I annoy her no end because I eat heaps and stay as thin as a pin. Mum says it's my nervous energy. No wonder I get nervous living with Terry. But I don't live with him anymore. Hooray, hooray, hooray! He did me a huge favour, hitting me with his belt. Nan took one look at me and went white. My God, treasure, what have they done to you? I just shrugged. I'm not a telltale like some people. Bethany and Kyle and Mum held their breath. Even little Gary stopped grizzling. My Nan's not daft. Terry did it, didn't he? She said. Her voice was very quiet in the hushed room. She looked around, her eyes flashing. Where is he? He's out, Mum. But it wasn't really Terry's fault. It was an accident. Accident, my bottom, said Nan. Well, she said something ruder and more alliterative. We have learned about alliteration at school. I am top girl, which isn't hard because heaps of our kids have got problems. Our school has got a bad name, but I won't have to go. I won't have to go into it any more. I shall go to a school near my Nan's. I'm living with her now. I can't believe it. Oh, I love my Nan so much. She got it all sorted. She made me stand under the light in the living room and gently pushed back my sticky fringe and peeled off the plasters Mum had stuck on. Nan swore again when she saw the size of the cut. Go and get your coat, Treasure, she said quietly. What are you on about? Mum, said my mum. We're off, said Nan. She nodded at the rest of the family. Come on, we'll have tea back at our place once we've taken Treasure up the hospital. Hospital, Mum whispered. She needs stitches, Tammy. How did he do it? Did he knife her? No, no, it was an accident. His belt... His belt, said Nan. She hugged me tight. Right, Bethany, you get yourself upstairs with a big carrier bag and get Treasure's clothes packed. She's staying with me from now on. We all stared at Nan. Jump to it, Bethany, Nan commanded. Yes, Nan, said Bethany, jumping. She's not her, Nan, but she does, as Nan tells her. We all do. You can't, Mum, said my Mum, starting to cry. I thought she meant I couldn't stay with Nan. I nearly cried then because I didn't want Mum to feel I was walking out on her. She needed me. She's useless at keeping Bethany and Kyle under control, and she doesn't always get up, get up for G Gary in the night. And then there's Terry. He hits her, too. I decided maybe I should stay, but it turned out she didn't mean that at all. You can't tra take Treasure up to the hospital, Mum. They'll want to know what happened. My Mum sobbed, and then they'll get onto the social, maybe even the police. They'll come down on Terry like a ton of bricks. Nan held me even tighter. She could feel me quivering. So, it's Terry we've got to think of, is it? Our treasure can get scarred for life, but never mind her. Let's all worry about Terry. Kyle was looking puzzled because he doesn't get sarcasm. Gary was wailing now, his nose running down into his mouth. Mum looked awful too, her mascara smudged, and her face so white it made the pink rouge along her cheekbones look like a clown makeup. 
It's just a nasty nick, Mum pleaded. Take treasure for a little holiday. It'll maybe, it's maybe all for the best, but don't cause trouble, Mum, I beg you. Call yourself a mother, said Nan. She bent down, scooped Gary out of his baby chair, checked his nappy and grimaced. Here, try and take care of this one at least. She thrust Gary at Mum and yelled up the stairs to Bethany. Bethany came running with a carrier bag spilling cloves. Nan snatched it from her and gave my shoulder a squeeze. Right, pet, we'll be off. Mum was so busy crying, she didn't say goodbye to me. Kyle just gawped, but Bethany suddenly put her arms around me and gave me a big hug, even though we've, been hate we've hated each other ever since we've been stepsisters. I'm sorry, treasure, she said. She must have been truly sorry, because when I unpacked the carrier bag back at Nan's, I found she put in her own black designer t-shirt, the one with the little grey squirrel on the front. She'd got it as one of her Christmas presents from Terry, and she'd gone berserk on Boxing Day when she'd found me secretly trying it on. It fitted perfectly, even though I'm t nearly two years older, because she's big and I'm a little titch. She had told me to whip it off quick, or she'd tell her dad, but now she'd given it to me. I'm wearing it now with my black jeans and my crocodile boots. I look seriously cool. OK, the boots are last year's, and so they scrunch on my toes a bit, but I don't care. We women have to suffer to look stylish, says Nan, when she kicks her high heels off and rubs her own sore feet. My Nan is young for a grandma and very, very glamorous. She wouldn't be seen dead in the usual granny gear. My Nan wears tight, lacy vesty things and short skirts that show off her legs. She looks especially glam when she teaches her line dancing class. She has all these little matching outfits. I like the white one best. White waistcoat with rhinestones, short white skirt and white leather cowboy boots with spurs. Can I go to your line dancing class sometime, Nan? I asked her. Of course you can, darling. I reckon you'll pick it up in no time. Patsy goes, don't you, pet? Patsy grinned at me. Yes, it'll be great treasure. Patsy is being so kind to me. She's so, so different from Bethany. Patsy doesn't even seem to mind that she has to share her bedroom with me. It's not much bigger than a cupboard, so it isn't easy. She's only got a single bed, so Nan fixed, up, fixed me up with cushions and a spare duvet on the floor. It seemed all right to start with, but in the middle of the night, the cushions kept sliding sideways. Patsy heard me rooting, rootling around, trying to reorganise my bedding. Here, treasure, come in my bed, she whispered. There isn't room. It's OK, I'm fine, I whispered back. No, you're not. Come on, it'll be fun. She paused and then giggled. Do as your auntie says, treasure. I giggled too. Patsy is only seven, but she is my actual auntie. She's Nan's youngest child. My mum is the oldest, though she acts like she's never grown up. Nan always says. Patsy is Nan's favourite. She calls her my little surprise. She's Pete's child, and Nan is nuts about him. I can't remember him properly, but I think he's big and bear-like. Patsy is little and fluffy like a baby bunny. She's got lovely long fair hair. She wears it in a ponytail or a top knot, with a cute little set of butterfly slides at either side. The only funny thing about Patsy is that she walks with her feet, pointing out like a penguin, but that's because she does a lot of ballet. She does tap too, and acrobatics. Nan's thinking of sending her to special stage school soon as she has the talent and the looks to make it really big. You'd think Patsy would be a horrid little show-off, but she's not a bit. I've always liked her lots, though we haven't met up much as I've lived all over the place with my mum and then when mum settled down with Terry, she and Nan kept falling out. But I like all Nan's family and I love Patsy second best to Nan. I squeezed into her bed and we cuddled up like spoons. Patsy felt so little and springy compared with Bethany. We weren't usually on cuddling terms at all, but if Terry and my mum were having a fight in the middle of the night, it got so scary that Bethany and I would huddle together, the duvet over our heads to block out the noise. Patsy's hair tickled my face, but I didn't mind. I reached out and stroked it gently. I'm trying to grow my own hair, but it goes all wispy. If I tilt my head back and hunch up, I can ki kid myself I've got shoulder-length hair, but it's not really. Patsy is so lucky having lovely long hair. Patsy is so lucky, full stop. Still, I've got lucky now. This is my new life, and I'm happy, happy, happy. I look a bit weird still, because I had to have ten stitches, and they're still sticking out of my forehead. Nan hasn't dared wash my head, hair yet, so my fringe is all stuck together. I shall have a big scar, but I don't care. It will t make me look tough. I didn't tell on Terry up at the hospital. I couldn't do it to Mum. I said me and my brother and sister were messing around playing a stupid cowboy game, and I got lassoed. Nan backed me up. Though... Why we should protect that pig, I don't know, she muttered, lighting up a ciggy. Still, I'm not having anyone call me a grass. She got told that the hospital has a strictly no-smoking policy as she stamped on it. She looked like she wanted to grind Terry under her high heel, too. Your mum's the one 
Needs her head looking at, said Nan, as she trailed out the hospital. My forehead all puckered up with a black thread. Why doesn't she leave him? I shrugged. It baffles me too. Still, I've left him now, haven't I? Nan, I said. You bet, treasure. You were such a good, brave girl up at the hospital. I'm proud of you. And I can really, truly stay with you, Nan. I'll do lots of housework and keep an eye on Patsy. And I can help Loretta with little Brittany. I I'm good with babies. Bless you, pet, said Nan. <laughs> you don't have to earn your keep, your family. And I can stay in your family for good, Nan. Promise? Yes, I promise, treasure, said Nan. That's the best bit. You can rely on my Nan. She never, ever breaks her promises. Chapter Two India. Dear Kitty, I don't know where to, what to, don't know what to put, and it sounds a bit silly. Dear Kitty, as if I'm writing a letter to our cat, Tabitha. I started this new diary that way because that's how Anne Frank wrote her diary. She was this wonderful Jewish girl who had to hide in a secret annex with her family during the last World War. And while she was there, she wrote a diary. She was a brilliant writer. She described everything so vividly. You really feel you're hiding in the annex with her, sharing your bedroom with a grumpy old dentist, eating rotten vegetables, running out of clothes to wear and having to creep about all the time, not even able to pull the lavatory chain when anyone's downstairs. Well, I don't flush the toilet sometimes when I get up in the night, but that's because our water system's really noisy and it wakes everyone up. If Dad wakes up, he can't get back to sleep because he's under a lot of pressure at work. That sounds so funny, as if Dad sits at his desk with a huge weight on his head. Actually, he often rubs the back of his neck, now as if it is hurting him. It hurts me too. I really love my dad. He's a managing director of this big engineering firm, Major Products. I don't really know what major things they produce. I don't even know exactly what my dad does. He manages. He directs. He's always been a whiz at his job, but now he acts like he's worried all the time. I tried messaging him, his, massaging his neck for him yesterday, but he pushed my hands away and said, Stop dabbing at me, India. I went away and cried. Mum happened to be home and came into my bedroom to look, at my, for, look for my coat and skirt to send to the cleaners. Maybe I'd better send you to the cleaners too, India, she said, looking at my blotchy face and inky fingers. I'd written a poem to express my feelings. It started, Oh, whoa, I love my dad so. It wasn't one of my better poems. Mum asked why I was crying, even sitting on the bed beside me and acting all mumsy for once. She seemed disappointed when I told her it was because Dad didn't seem to want me around him any more. For God's sake, India, don't be such a baby, she said, laughing at me. He's just snapped at you, that's all. That's, that's nothing. You should hear the things he says to me sometimes. She sniffed resentfully. Then she smiled again. Mum has this really irritating, dazzling smile, showing off all her cosmetic dentistry, but her eyes don't light up. It's as if her face is a mask and her eyes are the only real bit. Still, I suppose we'd better try to be understanding. Dad's having a hard time at work, Mum sighed. Aren't we all? The smile was there, still there, but it was as if she was silently adding. But some of us cope without making all this fuss. Anne Frank loved her dad, but frequently couldn't bear her mother. I feel Anne and I are soul sisters. I love to write too. I write my diary. I write stories and poems. I even wrote the nativity play at school. I tried so hard rewriting it three whole times, trying to be original, so it was mostly from the animal's point of view, with the ox and the ass and the littlest lamb as the major characters. Mrs Gibbs said in class that it was a lovely idea. Don't you think so, girls? Everyone smiled and said it was super, but out in the playground they all groaned and made faces and said it was the most stupid idea ever, and who wanted to act as a cow, for God's sake? Did I think they were all babies? I should have said they were all acting like babies right that minute. I didn't. I just blushed and stammered and said I was sorry. Yes, it was a mad idea. In fact, it absolutely sucked. So then they despised me for being wet as well as babyish and a teacher's pet. Sometimes I think I despise myself. I have bright ginger hair. Most people think this means I have a fearful temper. I do get angry because inside, but I can't stick up for myself. I only get furious when I think things aren't fair for other people. Maria waited until the others had all run off, and then she put her arm around me and said she thought my play sounded very imaginative. It was maybe more suited to little children. She thought it would work a treat with them. Maria was probably just being kind, though. She's kind to everyone. I wish Maria was my friend, but she's Alice's best friend. Everyone in my class has got a best friend, or else they go around little gangs like Lucy and Imogen and Sarah and Claudia. It's so awful not having a gang, not having a best friend. I used to. I used to have Miranda. We knew each other right from when we were babies because we shared the same nanny while our mums ran the designer scarf company. Miranda and I were almost like sisters. We went to the same kindergarten and then the same school. We always had each other. 
Miranda could be just a bit boring sometimes because she never had any ideas of her own. But I always had heaps of ideas, so I suppose it didn't matter too much. Miranda wasn't much use at playing pretend games, but at least she didn't laugh at me. When we were little, we had two favourites. We played monkeys, swinging about and being silly, and scratching ourselves. Or we played the flying game, pretending the sleeves of our coats were wings and swooping around all over the place. I know it sounds so daft now, but we were very little. As we got a bit older, the two games merged. Flying monkeys was the best game of all. We pretended we could whiz through open windows and throw peanuts at people. We could ride the weathercock on the church steeple, prance on the roof of the tallest multi-storey and nest in the tops of the poplars on the playing fields. We flying monkeys fiercely defended our territory against our enemies, flying elephants flapping their vast ears. Mum saw us battling it out one day. She didn't understand this was flying animal warfare. She clapped her hands and said, that looks great fun girls. But when she got me on my own, she hissed, I wish you wouldn't shriek so, India. And do you really have to galumph around like that? I said sulkily that I was being an elephant, so I was supposed to galumph. Mum said, oh, I see, my little Indian elephant. If Dad had said it, it would have been making a funny joke. But Mum was getting at me. She can't stand it because I'm fat. She's never actually said it. The nearest we come to is it, it is large, as in my daughter's a little on the large side. She whispers the word as if it's obscene. She thinks it is. My mum is so skinny, her arms and legs look like you could snap them off. When she wears a low-cut top, you can see all her bones. OK, she's got a fabulous flat tummy, but she's flat everywhere. She isn't naturally thin. She's on a permanent diet. She doesn't say she's dieting. She says she eats perfectly normally. It isn't normal to eat fruit and salad and raw vegetables all the time. I know she loves cake and chocolate like everyone else, but she never weakens. Dad once bought us a special big cake from a Viennese patisserie. Mum smiled and said, how gorgeous, and then had one bite of her slice. It was a little bite too. She's the same with chocolates. I've seen her lick one white Belgian cream chocolate and then throw it in the bin. She's amazing. I could never do that. I'm the exact opposite. I could eat an entire great gatto and a giant box of chocolates all by myself. Easy peasy. Mum and I have this constant battle. I'm supposed to be on a diet, but I don't stick to it. I eat my sliver of chicken and my cherry tomatoes and my carrot sticks and my apple and my orange and then I sneak upstairs and munch two Mars bars and a crunch and crunch a whole pack of Pringles. Mum went bananas when she found all the empty wrappings under my bed. She shouted all sorts of stuff and I cried and that made her worse because she hates me being a crybaby. She was furious with Wanda for letting me buy them. Wanda cried too. Wanda is even more of a crybaby than I am. Wanda is our latest au pair. We've had lots since I stopped needing a nanny. They never stay long. Mum never likes them. Dad likes the pretty ones, so Mum gets rid of them sharpish. Mum and Dad had a big fight over Bridget and Selka and May, so Mum decided to try an Australian girl. Someone sunny-natured and strong, said Mum, and bronzed and bouncy and blonde, Dad whispered to me, and we both giggled. But the laugh was on us, because Wanda isn't at all the way we wanted her to be. She's certainly not sunny. She looks vague and misty most of the time, so the kindest way of describing her would be cloudy. When she cries, she's downright dismal. She isn't strong. She can't manage more than one bag of shopping, and she's always yawning and flopping down on the sofa and falling asleep. She's not bronzed and bouncy and blonde. She's papery white and droopy with long, dark, witchy hair. She washes it once a day, sometimes even twice, and walks around with it dripping wet. Wanda takes me to school and fetches me in the afternoon and fixes me a few snacks. We've done a little deal. We chuck the cottage cheese and celery and carrot stick, carrots straight in the bin and buy secret supplies of sweets and stuff. It's not fair. Wanda eats as much chocolate and crisps as I do, and yet she's ever so thin, even thinner than Mum. Mum hopes she might use Wanda as a cheap personal assistant, taking phone calls and collecting material samples and contra co contacting models. But Wanda wisely made such a mess of things, Mum's banned her from having anything to do with the business. My mum is Moya Upton, the children's clothes designer. She swapped from scarves five years ago when she couldn't find any clothes she liked for me. She, so now she makes ultra cool designer clothes for kids. There are three Moya Upton shops in London, in Notting Hill, South Kensington and Hampstead. One in Leeds, one in Glasgow. And there's a special Moya Upton section in Harrods Junior Collection Department. There was a five-page feature in Vogue last year and heaps of stuff in the papers. All the girls in my school are mad about Moya Upton clothes. The only girl in the entire country who hates Moya Upton clothes is me. They are little and I am big. They are tight and I need loose. They are bright and I like dark. 
They're sparkly and I like stark. My mum always says she started designing clothes to suit her daughter. I don't know which daughter that is. It certainly isn't me. And that is where we will leave part one of Secrets by Jacqueline Wilson. I'll be back soon with the next part of this fantastic story and lots more stories and videos coming your way very soon. If you'd like to subscribe or hit a like, that's always appreciated. Thanks for listening, guys. Take care. Bye bye.